Hey, what's up? It's a Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and today I'm going to take a look at simple waveforms and how we can combine simple waveforms to make more complex waveforms. Um, what I've loaded up is a 1 hertz frequency in Adobe Edition, and I'm going to see the behavior when we're going to add this to another frequency. So you can see this duration of this clip is exactly one second, and we've got one completed oscillation. Therefore, we talk about a one hertz frequency. If I'm gonna look at the two hertz, you can see this is also the duration of one second, and this has two completed cycles in one second. Therefore, it is a two hertz frequency. If we go to the three hertz, you can see we've got three completed cycles in one second. I'm gonna go to the one hertz, and I'm gonna copy this. So I'm gonna go to edit, I'm going to copy it and now I'm going to go to my 2 hertz and I'm going to select the whole clip, edit and mix paste this at the same amplitude. And you can see this created a much more complex waveform and this doesn't look like the sine wave. So this is the combination of these two signs combined. So let me undo that and let me add this 1 hertz frequency to the 3 hertz frequency. So I'm going to go to edit mix paste. You can still see the shape of that 1 hertz frequency here, but it has been modulated by that 3 hertz frequency. They're both at the same amplitude, so that's something normally you wouldn't really find, but you can see how the behavior is when we add these frequencies together. Besides the simple sine wave that we've just seen, other simple waveforms are, for example, a square wave. A square wave just looks like a square, as the name kind of suggests, and it looks, when we zoom in, pretty much like this. So just a square. If we play that back, this is a square wave at 220 hertz. I'm gonna play that back. Compared with the sine at 220 hertz. You could say that the square sounds a lot more aggressive. We also have a triangle wave. Let me zoom in on that. You can see this is a triangle shaped waveform also at 220 hertz so it's the same frequency and it sounds like so again it's 220 hertz so we can clearly hear the pitch but again it sounds a little bit more aggressive than the sine wave so we can actually combine uh, let's say square waves as well here i've combined a 220 plus a 440 hertz square wave but we can see the addition of these two so i've got the square of 220 here and I've got the square of 440 somewhere else right here and this is just the output of both of these combined and that looks like so and it sounds like so so these simple waveforms are actually the basics of synthesizers where we can actually combine simple waveforms and manipulate them, modulate them, filter them and do a lot of crazy stuff with them to create synthetically made up sounds just with simple waveforms. When we combine a square waveform with a triangle waveform, I've used the same frequency here, you can see this is the result of the output of these two signals combined. You can see it still has the character of the of the triangle or the sawtooth waveform and also it has that real uh, distinct shape of the square waveform so this is really the combination of both of these let me just lower the amplitude a little bit so i'm going to go to my amplitude and put it on 75 percent and i'm going to use a 110 hertz so i'm not going to use the same frequency i'm going to use an octave lower i'm going to copy this sine wave at 110 hertz and i'm going to combine that with the 220 hertz waves of the square and the triangle already combined so we're basically combining three waveforms so let me paste that in um, let's go to edit mix paste use that at 75 percent it's already getting a lot louder you can see this is really giving some complex waveforms it still repeats over time because we're still using these simple waveforms but you can see this is already starting to create some really interesting looking waves so this sounds a lot different and it's it's like synthesis again so let's take a look at some other interesting behavior of waves and i'm going to use the sine wave again and i've created this 55 hertz sine wave 
and I've got a 880 Hertz sine wave as well. This is the same duration that I'm zoomed in on, as you can see right here in the corner. And if we combine this 55 with the 880 Hertz sine wave, we get this as a result. So we can see that the, well, basically the lead or the main frequency is still carrying here. You can see that this is really that same sine wave as we see here, but it really added this 880 Hertz frequency to this 55 Hertz frequency. And this gives this as a result. So what we could do is, uh, let me just use a uh, one Hertz frequency. So I'm gonna copy this 880 Hertz frequency. I'm gonna select all of it. I'm gonna go to edit, copy it. And then I'm gonna open up my one Hertz and I'm gonna edit mix space that in here. You can see clearly that this one Hertz frequency is like the carrier frequency. And if we zoom in, you're gonna see it's been modulated because it's got all these smaller sine waves in it. <laughs> it's like a really thick sine wave. In the next video, I'm gonna take a look at more of the harmonic content and, uh, and what harmonics do. And then we're gonna take a look at frequency analyzers and uh, some more interesting behavior of sound. So I hope to see you uh, in the next video. Again, I hope you've learned something today. This was Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials and I hope to see y'all soon. Peace.